Right, so this is going to be the talent video that I've been promising. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll quickly talk about each talent uh, then, and what I've learned at the start of the season. Um, which ones are worth taking, which ones aren't. Um, and then I'm going to go over a build that I've been playing a lot lately that's actually really fun. So, first of all, we've got Castigation. And since Pence, damage and healing isn't that great at the moment, um, you don't really want to pick it up for offensive purposes. You, you pick this bad boy defensively and you pick it in combination with Contrition. Uh, and, and it really increases your penance healing throughput. Um, and basically means you need to mend less, which means you're more mobile and you you have more mana, which is great. Then you have Twist of Fate, which is good for recovering against uh, either high burst, high CC, or generally high spread pressure, but I found that Castigation can be better for this. Um, and then Schism is your main, this, this is more your nuke and your pressure talent. So if you want to pump a lot of damage um, and you want to stand there turreting um, most of the game uh, and you don't have that much healing to do, you can do most of your healing through Atonement, you take Schism. And you got Body and Soul, pretty dead. Uh, you can use it occasionally, but it really gimps your mobility. Only procs once every six seconds now, so it's way less reliable than it was in Legion. And it doesn't cover your Rapture properly because it's, again, once only every six seconds. So you'll only get it on your first Rapture Shield. After that, you're naked and you're just getting purge spammed anyway. So Body and Soul, for me, not really worth it anymore. Masochism, still fine if you're getting trained by something. Uh, but if you're playing with any classes that allow you to kite, maybe go for Angelic Feather. Um, Priest has, I'd say, a little bit more survivability this expansion with Radiance and some of the traits uh, when Cleave's gone on you. So, Masochism, probably not as needed as it was, I'd say, in Legion, but still there if you need it. Shield Discipline, I tried out a build with... Um, sh uh, What's it called? Wheel and Woe, Shield Discipline, Body and Soul, and Strength of Soul. Um, and basically you penance offensively. Wheel and Woe gives you, a, if you have three of the traits, you get about a 20k shield. Um, and you can use this against heavy fizz damage teams uh, like that have a mess. So like a jungle with a survival hunter, or I, I guess BM hunter has... MS as well now, so jungle in general, uh, KFC it's good for as well, just heavy fizz damage teams um, that are all, uh, that, that have MS, sorry. Um, and what it does is basically allows you to spam shield a lot more, and the shield will give a 15% fizz damage reduction, and it won't be affected by MS. Um, and you can run Archangel with that as well to boost shields, absorb values as well. Um, and it actually works surprisingly well. Uh, the only issue is it does tax your mana fairly hard. So it's more, you're playing against this kind of team and you're playing something similar and the game is gonna be fast. You wanna be really mobile. You wanna avoid as much CC as you can. You, you wanna be on the move. You don't wanna be standing there mending. You want to make it hard as far, as hard as possible for them to CC. So you're just running around spamming these really obnoxious damage reduction shields. Um, and it's a, it's a different playstyle. I gave it a try. It was okay. I need to do a bit more testing with it uh, to see whether or not it's better than the Castigation healing spec. But it, it seemed to be not bad. And if you can get a, a shield that's big enough that they go through it, around when your global ends so that you get the mana from shield discipline then it seems to be okay uh, if they're going through it faster then you're going to slowly fall behind um, and you don't have ideal other talents to deal with things um, having said that you could still run that in combination with the castigation contrition spec um, haven't tried it yet could be great we'll see how it goes I'm going to give it a go in the near future, and I'll probably let you guys know. We'll see on the stream. So that's Shield Discipline. Well, I can't believe I just talked so long about Shield Discipline. Unbelievable. Okay, so Mindbender, 
great when you don't have spare globals or if you're running searing light um, and castigation contrition um, because you want to be smiting not solacing because the smite resets the penance we'll talk about it more later and then again solace is is better mana than mindbender probably better damage overall less burst i'd say um you can burst more often with mindbender um Bear in mind though, Shadow Fiend does do more damage on the one pop that you have it for. So if games are lasting maybe two odd minutes um, in threes, then Mindbender is it probably going to be superior. Uh, then we have Fear Cooldown Reduction, mandatory. You can run Knock occasionally on certain maps, but Fear Cooldown Reduction is pretty staple. Um, since the many, 8% in PvP is nerfed. Um, still good for most or a lot of comps, especially when you're doing a lot of damage. Um, and, and great in twos too. So if you're going to be doing, getting a lot of smites off, you know, you're going to be running schism, all that luck, then you probably want to go for this. Contrition is pretty much exclusively used with castigation, um, and provides... A lot of healing with penance. So this is was definitely underrated, and I'm, I'm rating this higher and higher currently. Uh, then we have Shadow Covenant. I still believe this is pretty much a mythic, mythic plus talent. I can't really see many situations where this would be used in PvP. Um, other than a, like a top off and nuke kind of deal, but yeah, the drawback I'm not really a big fan. Um, so I, I mean, I haven't tested it that much in PvP yet. I'm not. I don't have high hopes for it. Purge the Wicked, pretty much standard Divine Star and Halo, not really worth using in PvP. I'd say. Um, nothing really more to say about it. Um, and then you take Lenience. And this is the biggest joke. This 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 talent and this I guess tier is is the biggest joke. Because this is one of the worst talents I've ever seen. But Luminous Barrier just is not worth taking, it's dispellable. The only time you would use it is for a bomb. You can barrier on the bomb anyway. There's no point. You might as well just take three percent less damage taken, you know, why not? Because evangelism takes a global and you just don't need it in PvP. So, it's the least bad of the three, which is astounding when you look at it. So that's the talents, and then we've got our PvP talents. Um, double Dispel, good against mages. Uh, potentially good against Ellie Shamans, dispelling that Flame Shock. Um, purified Resolve, I've used this one time in just to troll Ellie Shamans again. Just dispelling every Flame Shock and getting a shield. Uh, it's quite amusing. Uh, then we have... Trinity, used quite a lot. If you get a lot of smites off, this is good. Definitely worth taking. Strength of Soul, as I said earlier, has potential when you have the shield spam spec, but other than that, it's not that great. Uh, Ultimate Radiance is very good for re recovering from burst. Um, it absolutely destroys your mana, though, so if you're going to run this, you better have three Radiance traits. Um, otherwise, I would say it's probably not worth it. Dome of Light, very, very good defensive cooldown. Um, this is very good against Hunter comps, stuff like that. You can pretty much negate an entire go from them with this. It, if you take it, it's the strongest defensive you have. So definitely worth using sometimes. Uh, Archangel, actually slightly underrated, I'd say. If you're running the Pendant spec or uh, with Radiance... You can take this and you can boost the value of your penance cooldown or, you know, the, those radiance cooldowns by a significant amount. Um, if you can get this off, bear in mind there is global on it. If you're just going to be mending, then this is probably not that worth it because it can, it's going to take about five ends to actually get value out of it. So. And then you've got premonition, which is just death, standard, dark which is, I think, really, really valuable and as a disc is something really unique you bring to a team. Uh, I've been using it a lot and 
you can force a lot of cooldowns with this cooldown, um, which I think is very, very valuable. Um, and then you have Searing Light, which is more smite damage and smite resets your penance. So if you were running this, you would, your rotation is basically penance, uh, smite, 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 penance. Which brings me to the, my next point, which is this spec, which is what I've been running lately, which is wholeheartedly worth a try. If you're struggling with mana, if you're struggling with lack of healing, um, if you're feeling like your men spamming all day, try this spec. And what you do is you just penance defensively on cooldown. It's basically free. And then after you penance, you smite the enemy. And you smite them three times, and then your penance is back up. And you go for that as much as you can. The more often you can do that in the game, the more chance you will win the game. It's Smite is insane value right now. And you're giving it even more value by it resetting the cooldown on the penance. And the penance will heal a lot with this with this spec. And it will heal even more with the Archangel up. Um, and the reason we don't go Solace is, as I said earlier, we want to be smiting, not solacing. Uh, because Solace doesn't reset our penance cooldown. Um, there's nothing much more to it, really. You have Dark, because Dark is solid, and obviously Searing Light. Um, and that's the spec. Um, give it a go. Give it a try. Let me know what you think. It's made the game infinitely more fun for me since trying it. Uh, the traits you want with this spec are either Wheel and Woe. Uh, or in twos, you can run Battlefield Focus if you've got them. As many Battlefield Focus as you can. It's probably Biss. I'm 90% I'm sure it's Biss for Disc. Um, Laser Matrix is great too, but it just got nerfed. Uh, other than that, I'd say Dagger in the Back is next. Wait, let me just really check, quickly check. So Dagger in the Back is probably yeah I'd say Dagger in the back and Tidal Surge as your third so you can run that in this slot um, or any slot whatever you've got Dagger in the back Tidal Surge I, I think if you're if you have to choose get one Tidal Surge and then two Dagger in the backs or whatever or, or one of these a Dagger in the back and a Tidal Surge because Tidal Surge has value it has more value as one but then the value decreases as as you get more of them because the slow is you're not getting more slow by stacking the talent and it's really oppressive just spamming the slow around just because you've got purge of the wicked on people and a 20 percent 20 percent slow might not sound a lot but it actually does change games um so yeah dag in the back tidal surge loads of matrix um and Battlefield Focus, all great offensive talents for twos if you want to take them, if you want to go that route, play it a little bit more aggressively. Um, you can also go Wheel and Woe, it's fine with this build. Um, or you can go, let me see if I have one. And before I don't have one now, there's Wheel and Woe. This one, Homily. Um, this is going to increase on a 340 item. This increases your penance damage by approximately 700 or so. Considering penance does about 10k damage in my gear. Seven, uh, and, and my gear is pretty good right now. I have about 6k in. So 700 damage for one trait on penance is not bad. Obviously, ideally, you don't want to be offensively penancing. But you will be sometimes because... If people don't need to be topped, you can just throw one out. It's free damage. Um, and you can reposition while doing it. So I'm I'm personally going to try out on one of my ults a triple homily build and see how it goes. It's 2,100 more damage on 340s. Um, which is about 20% more damage. It's not bad. Um, so I'm, I'm going to give that a go. That's my, my plan for next. Wheel and Woe is uh is nice in theory but the issue with it i find is like how much is it actually bringing me okay like if i run triple wheel and woe where is it this is a good item yeah so i can run like a triple one and it, the shield will give me slightly less than six it will give me slightly less than 6k more on a shield which is is great and all, but it's only after I do a damaging penance, which I don't really want to be doing. Um, it's not ideal to be doing a damaging penance with this build. And if I'm doing a damaging penance for that, then do I really want slightly more heal, a slightly more absorb on a shield? Wouldn't I rather just have 
a, a flat like 2.2 or whatever it 2.2k whatever it is damage more on the penance itself probably it's probably going to give me more value um and and obviously healing an ally with penance is going to increase it increase the damage of my next smite by by 500 so if i have three of them 1.5k well that's great and all but i mean that's what like 1k more atonement healing it's nothing significant so i think the value of this talent is actually a little bit overestimated um for me and I think if I'm going to be going for the, the extra damage on Smite, if that's why I'm taking this talent, then I'd rather just take some damage talents because they'll just do that anyway. And I don't really need that extra 1k atonement healing. It's not going to change as much as the extra damage will in terms of pressure. And I, if I'm, if I'm taking it for the damaging component, then I can either just take homily or I can, again, take damage talents. Um... So I feel like Wheel and Wove, it looks good at first, but I think it was, if it was the other way around, I would value it more. Weirdly. So, yeah. I mean, I'll probably still give it a try and, and run it at some point, but I think logically there are other... There's a better option for each offensive and defensive penances so and, and obviously i don't want to be offensive penancing too much with this build um so yeah that's this that's the traits um personally i'm going for this in twos and i'll most likely go for um battlefield focus in threes i'll probably just keep laser matrix in threes on this one on my alts i'll probably go for homily if i can for threes um, and I'll go triple homily as the extra damage does actually give more atonement healing so remember anything that's modifying the damage of your current existing abilities the will benefit atonement but if it's an uh, external damaging source for example battlefield focus gives you uh, an external damage component on recount or re details or whatever you're using that won't increase your atonement healing and same for trinkets and, and whatnot. If you're getting like extra int so that you do more smite damage, more atonement healing. If it's a damage proc, no atonement healing. Um, so yeah, that's that's everything I wanted to say. I think I went on way longer than I thought I would. Um, if you've got any comments, like I said, if you tried this back, found it good, um, then then let me know. And, and a big thanks to. Uh, some of the guys in my chat and uh, and V Whisperer, who urged me to give this build a try, because um, I was skeptical at first, but I'm very glad that I did. I'm enjoying the game much more now. Um, yeah, I think that was everything. See you guys on the stream.